twin sisters, Chris and Cliff Paul, set out to unite their fans by creating something everyone could agree on. Having lobbed such ideas as the CP3 legged shorts and a State Farm clipper ship, they finally landed on the perfect answer the Jordan CP3 ID in Cliff's favorite Argyle. Create your own pair. After all, when it's worn to assist, you know it. Welcome back to another episode of The Rush. As always, I'm Danny Fry. And I'm Hannah Duncan. This week, we bring you boys basketball against Lanphier and girls basketball against Rochester. The Rush also skates to the ice rink with the Glenwood hockey team facing Bloomington and takes you to the mats for wrestling against East St. Louis and Edwardsville. And now that the NFL football season is over, we'll bring you basketball picks from Eric Burklow. Now let's get the show underway. Last Friday night in a coaches versus cancer game, the Glenwood boys basketball team faced off at home against the undefeated Lamphere Lions, who are at the top of the Class 3A state rankings. Here as a guest anchor is junior guard Cole Harper. Cole, thanks for coming on. No problem. So, Cole, you know, playing number one ranked team in the state, uh, they're entering, the Lions were entering the game 19-0, and, and, you know, how prepared were you guys after the first meeting when you lost at Lobernica 64-56? Yeah, we were definitely more prepared, and uh, we knew that coming in, they were uh, playing for a school record uh, with uh, their most wins undefeated season, and uh, so, you know, we definitely watched a lot of tape, the coaches watched a lot of tape, and they definitely made us more prepared for this game. And let's go ahead and jump into the highlight here, the Titans and the Lions. Coaches versus Cancer pink out game and senior Larry Austin, he's heading to Tennessee. He was a really key player. What's it like going up against a quick guard like LA? Yeah, for sure. He definitely improved his shot this year also. So you had to honor his shot and uh, his drive. Now you go off strong right there with a basket off the glass. It was 12-10 Titans at the end of the first quarter, Anna. And in the second quarter, Peyton Allen taps the ball to you, and you pick up the shot. Mid-second, Titans were winning 20-17, to but Lancer were going on an 11-1 run. What happened for you guys offensively in that stretch? Yeah, um, we had definitely a couple defensive breakdowns, and against Lancer that can't happen because they capitalized. Yeah, Larry Austin hit the layup there. Lions led at halftime 28-21. Now Peyton Allen, he'll take it down the floor here, draws the contact for the hoop in the Harmon Cole. You got pretty pumped right here. Yeah, for sure. I was uh, trying to get our team pumped. I hate when the uh, team's heads go down and I'm just trying to be a leader. And that was a good job of that, but unfortunately the Titans committed some turnovers that were costly. That was intended for you, but Aaron Thames stops and pops and that kind of threw off your tempo a little bit. Yeah, for sure. They capitalized on every turnover, so we definitely had to limit them. And on to the fourth quarter, Austin, he was muscling here to increase Lanphier's lead. Glenwood never got closer than 15 points in this quarter. And you know, that really was the story of the game, similar to the last matchup. Glenwood led midway through the second quarter, and Lanphier took away the ties momentum heading into halftime. Lions pick up their 20th win of the season at the school record 20-0 start. Larry Austin, double-double, 29 points, 11 rebounds, 20-point win for the Lions. Peyton Allen with 17 points as well. Here is Coach Blake Turner of the Lions after the game. He's really made a huge jump this year, his senior year. He's leading us, and I've said all along, we're going to go as he goes. And he's been great for these first 20 games, and he's a huge part of the reason why we're 20-0 right now. Those great teams, even though they didn't start 20-0, they went to the state tournament. There's a huge history at our school, and we want to be a part of that history, and we've got to continue to get better. We've got a tough regional. We've got a tough sectional. We've got tough conference games left. we just got to keep getting better and keep taking it a game at a time like we've been saying all year. Now, Cole, talk about this. It's going to be a busy weekend for you guys. Tonight against a little underrated Southeast team, and then tomorrow, which will be another physical game against SHG. Yeah, um, Southeast and SHG are both underrated. Southeast, they got uh, a lot of good guard play, and then their big guy, Jalen Henry, is heading to uh, Edwardsville, SIU, mm -hmm. or Edwardsville, and uh, 
we're definitely focused on him, stopping him, and then also we have to get up to their uh, s their skilled guard play. So it'll it'll be it'll be a good game. And they got they got shooters too. They're not just you know a pound it inside team. That's sort of what uh, Coach Lawrence Thomas has brought to Southeast. Got that physical game against SHG. It was very physical um, last week over or not last week, but last time you guys played at Bell's Gym. Where are you trying to bring here uh, at home? Yeah, we're definitely gonna uh, be physical. Be physical back with them. Um, that is kind of what SHG thrives on, their physicality, their, all, their football school, and I think three or four of their starters are football players. They want mm -hmm. a state championship. So, you know, we Lewis definitely got to – Green Turner, yeah. Yeah, we definitely got to bring the, uh, the physicality back at them. And, uh, you know, they got two great shooters with uh, McDonald and uh, Sustak. And Nate can shoot a little bit. I mean, everyone can shoot it. But, you know, they're all around good team. And, uh, you know, it's – Definitely about physicality in that case. Now, Peyton Allen's really brought seems brought a lot to this team. 25 points a game, 7 rebounds a game, and he's picking up some more college interest, some more college offers, and Roy Williams of North Carolina. North Carolina wanted a shooter. They're coming this weekend, probably Saturday, in Chad to check out the game as they play Notre Dame in 11. You talk about what's like playing with a guy like that and, you know, seeing some of that national attention here in Chatham. Yeah, last year when uh, I went down with Mono and then he happened to get it from me, and it seemed like all the colleges that were recruiting him at that time kind of laid off, and that that kind of you know it was like a it hurt him and hurt uh, hurt everyone that was played with him because we knew how good he can be and how good he was, and uh, in the summer he kind of picked it up. He started getting back to where he was skillfully wise, and and that was about August or uh, mm -hmm. April, mm -hmm. and uh, then July he really started picking it up in the AAU circuit, and then this year colleges are really looking and seeing what he really can do, and he's getting the interest that he should. Titans are now 13-9 on the season. Cole, thanks for coming on. Good luck tonight and over this busy weekend. Thank you. Glenwood plays back-to-back -back home games this weekend. One against Southeast tonight at 745 and one tomorrow at 630 here at GHS against the Cyclones of Sacred Heart Griffin. Last Saturday, the Lady Titans basketball team played Rochester in the Eaton Tournament Championship game in Lincoln. Let's see how the Titans did in a rematch against the Lady Rockets. The Lady Rockets have been really hard to beat this season. Checking out this highlight here, Junior Parker Bandy being introduced here in Lincoln. She's been scoring double fig in double figures lately and really stepping up for the team. Maddie Lawrence with a strong drive to the basket for two points early on there for the Titans. Next, the ball stolen away, and then an outlet pass to Emily Maston. She'll make the easy layup. Glenwood would lead 9-8 at the end of the first quarter. But Rochester was on the move all game, on the move again here as Megan McNicholas is open. I want it, I want it, and she will knock down the three from the right corner. She scored 14 points in the ball game, but the Titans tried to counter that up-tempo pace. Nikki Hogan with a nice pass inside to Maggie Julen. She's heading to Drake for soccer, and a pretty good basketball player as well, though. Uh, Rochester led 22 to 16 at the half, Hannah. And in the third quarter is when Rochester began to pull away, increasing their lead as Kylie Clemens knocks down the tray from the left corner. Then the Rockets will dump the ball inside to Angela Perry, who gets the shot to fall off the glass, and she'll put up 12 points for the Rockets. Rochester led 40-31 after three. Coach Crossan, though, had a plan to try to get his Lady Times back into it. That plan included Nikki Hogan with a strong drive to the basket as Times tried a final push as eventually Parker Bandy inside for two more. But the Titans, in the end, Rochester's attack was too much for Glenwood to handle. Hannah, the final score. Rochester won 57-45, Hogan with 14 points and Maggie Jewell with 13. Rochester claimed the tournament title and that win gave the Lady Rockets a 4-0 record in the tournament and a 22-3 record overall. The girls host SHG this Saturday at 5 o'clock in the big gym right before the boys game. It's time to take our first commercial break of the day. When we return, we'll bring you hockey highlights along with wrestling against East St. Louis and Edwardsville. Right back after these words. Stay tuned. A restaurant that supplies a wonderful dining experience. We offer outstanding fried chicken and over the top walleye and pizza. With quality products at affordable prices, Fat Willie's is the way to go. 
open Monday through Saturday, 12 a.m. to midnight. Call us today at 217-483-6969. Aaron, you're all set. Great, thanks. Mike, thanks for doing that discount double check. You saved us hundreds. What was that? The discount double check? It's when we comb through your policies and make sure that you're getting all the discounts you deserve. No, I get that part, but you guys are doing my move. The discount double check move? It's my touchdown dance. So you're a dancer? No, I'm a quarterback. Oh, quarterback. More. I'm a robot. <laughs> Where's your <finger? laughs> Get out of here. Get to a better state, State Farm. Call Steve Bedford in Chatham for personal service and discounts that you deserve. Kids, breakfast is ready. Eat up. Your friend's gonna be here pretty soon. I'll be there in a second. Have a great day. My friend's here, I'm leaving. Be safe, come home right after school. All right, see ya. Wow, your dad's are really looking out for you. That's not my dad. That's my family's financial advisor, Mr. Sullivan. Sullivan Financial, looking out for your investments and your family. Welcome back to The Rush. Look at this angle over here. The Titan Hockey Club recently geared up for back-to-back -back games against Bloomington. Senior Johnny Webb joins us now. Johnny, thanks for coming on. It's no problem. Now, your team has 10 losses, and what's kind of been the, the biggest focus, you know, to improving your guys' performance? Well, right now we have a lot of kind of like underperforming players because mm -hmm. they're new underclassmen and mm -hmm. we're really trying to coach them up to get up to the level of some of our competitive level players who are carrying most of the load right now and that's our main goal. Let's go ahead and take a look at the highlights here for the Titans and the Bloomington Sharks, one of the top teams in the LLHH. Now you try for a goal here and now you get the goal here, Johnny, yeah. but it, they don't count it? What was the deal there? Yeah, really the referees were just out of position there and they didn't see the goalie pull it out of the net and it's just really unfortunate because they went down and scored right after that too. Yeah, with Jared Mounts with the tough shot, Hannah. Vince Lanier, he scores in both the second and third periods there. And then Conker is going to make another good save. He's just a freshman, but he had a really good game, only allowing two goals. Yeah, the goalkeeper from Bloomington pretty good for him. Yeah, he's a strong backup for them. That's not even their starter, so wow. I guess we're lucky we haven't faced him yet. I mean, he had a really good game, kept him in the game. Bloomington tacked on another goal. They just kept on shooting. 48 shot attempts. Bloomington only had 17. Yeah. Bloomington takes it 6-2 to two this time around, and that is that one. And... Now, you, just four days after that, you got to turn around and play Bloomington again and play the Sharks again at the Nelson Center. Let's go ahead and take a look at the results there. What happened? Talk about the tempo of this game, and uh, you're closer. Cut it down to two. Yeah, well, this is a much better game for us. We had our full team there. Uh, Brandon Hay was there. He's probably our best player this year, even as a freshman. He's unbelievable. I mean, yet again, they, they had another goal that they took away from us this game, which is just really unfortunate, which, mm -hmm. I mean, like, at the end, it was 5-3. If it was 5-4, we probably would have pulled the goalie. Mm -hmm. I mean, you never know what happens. Just miss some opportunities, too. I mean, our defense, we got to step up as well, help out Jake, so. Yeah, now, Johnny, you guys have played Bloomington twice in a row now, and you play them again in a rescheduled game next Friday. So how are you going to use what you've seen of them so far recently to your advantage and to change how you play? Well, we really got to shut down some of their big impact players like Shad Funk. He had two goals last game, one even shorthanded, which is really What's bad. his first name, Shad? Yes. <laughs> the Sharks? Okay, I just had to get that out of the way, but continue. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> we really just got to step up on him. He's their best player. Shut him down as well as we just got to step up on defense and not let them get as many shots on Jake, which is a main problem for us. And we also just got to score, too. We just got to convert on our chances because we don't have, obviously, as many as them. I mean, just got to score. Got SHG coming up on Wednesday, I believe, is the mm. plan on the schedule. Schedule's been, you know, switched yeah. around with all of the uh, weather um, cancellations. But, you know, 
You've beat them in the past, and this year they're actually at the top of the of the mm. conference. And talk about you've been close with them. Talk about what what it takes for you guys to get over the hump against the uh, hockey cyclones. Well, also again, I mean, you just gotta mm -hmm. keep the shots down on Jake. I think the first time we played them, they had up around 60 yeah. shots, which is horrendous. You I mean usually you want to average around 30 a game? Falls on the defenders. Yeah, yeah. and defenders. We, the forwards also gotta step up on the mm -hmm. points too and block some shots. And also you just gotta score. They don't have a very strong goalie. I mean, they have a really strong team, which helps out a lot. Like, mm -hmm. they have very good defense, a lot of competitive players on that team. And really, we just got to score on the weak goalie and just step up on defense and stop them. All right, Johnny, good luck in that venture against the Cyclones coming up, and thanks for coming on. The next Tide in Hockey game will be at 7 o'clock on Wednesday against Sacred Heart Griffin at the Nelson Center. The Titan Wrestlers hosted East St. Louis and Edwardsville last Thursday in the East Gym on Senior Night. Let's first see how the team fared against the Flyers of East St. Louis. Checking out this highlight against East St. Louis, starting off with TJ Wrigley. He's in the 120 class. It was a long and drawn out match here as the senior Wrigley, he'll get an escape for the win with the score at 1-0. Yeah, very quick match there and uh, move on to J.D. Turner, how he's able to score. And Turner's opponent started off uh, with a shoot attempt but forces him away and Turner's able to get the turnaround to be on his back right here. J.D. will go and flip his opponent on his back and he would later on in the match go ahead and pull the pin. The, Ace, the East St. Louis wrestlers though, they got off to a solid start at the lower waist besides Wrigley at 120 and that propelled the Flyers past the Titans. 38 to 30. Then on the opposite mat were the higher weights facing off against a very good Edwardsville team. Let's check out this highlight. Edwardsville had a flawless dual record going into this meet at 26 0. Wow. Let's see if they can keep that streak alive. First, Mason Kaler of the 152 class. He's a senior. He'll start off the match strong early on with the slam against his opponent, senior Luke Schluter, to gain a 6 2 lead. But that'll be his last scoring effort as Sluter gets the upper hand on Kaler to tie the match 6-6 at the end of regulation. In sudden death, Kaler can't hang on. That's two points for Edwardsville as Kaler loses 8-6. That gives EHS, who are ranked number seven in the state in Class 3A, an early 3-0 lead in the duel. Hannah, doing your homework there. That's stuff I didn't even know. And moving on to 160 pounds, Damian Blake again. And now, he, doesn't this look familiar from last week? A little case of deja vu against Springfield. Blake starts off trying to get Gabe Jackson of Edwardsville on his back. Jackson eventually flips over to try to avoid being pinned, but you know what? Damian Blake was relentless. He would get on the top and dominate him throughout the, throughout the rest of the match. And he really showed how strong and hard you have to be here at this duel. And eventually, he will go ahead, pull down, and get the pin right here as he's battling with Jackson, a guy who didn't give up. This was very high scoring. A lot of scoring happened in streaks. It got 12 8, and right here, half the mat. That's a pin. And going into this, Edwardsville BD St. Louis 46 to 19 to keep their undefeated season alive, and they would do that yet again. Hannah with the scoreboard. Edwardsville, a very tough team. In their matches, they were able to pull away in the second half, which really added up for the 64-6 victory for the Tigers. Mason Kaler lost 8-6, and Damian Blake won by fall. Come out tomorrow to see the Titan Wrestling Squad in the individual regionals at 10 a.m. at Springfield High School. The Rush is going to take our last commercial break. When we come back, Eric Burklow will bring us the top three plays for this week and his basketball prediction. Also up next is the weekly debate. Stay right there. Well, Mr. Raji, we could save you hunters by doing a discount double check. Not you too, Raji. You're on my team. You know that's my move. The discount double check? No, that's my touchdown dance, man. Here we go again. Sir, you're not even doing it right. Raji, drop it. Show me what you got, what you got, Raji. What is this? Come on now. You said you were a dancer. Where are you going, buddy? Come on back. Get to a better state. State Farm. Call Steve Bedford in Chatham for personal service and discounts that you deserve. 
Fat Willie's in Chatham is a great family restaurant that supplies a wonderful dining experience. We offer outstanding fried chicken and over-the-top walleye and pizza. With quality products at affordable prices, Fat Willie's is the way to go. Open Monday through Saturday, 12 a.m. to midnight. Call us today at 217-483-6969. Welcome to The Rush. I'm Eric Barkle here at the top three plays of Titan Sports this week. Let's start the countdown with play number three at the Eaton Tournament Championship game versus Rochester as Glenwood Jr. Matt and Lawrence with a strong take to the basket to keep the Titans in the ball game early, although the Lady Rockets won 57-45. On, on the play number two, it's in gain. It's the Titan wrestle Damian Boyd clocking the top three with another solid pin. This time against his opponent from Edwardsville, although the Glenwood as a team lost to me. And, and, and the top play at Glenwood Sports this week is boys basketball against Lanfield when Peyton Allen tapped the ball to Cole Harper, who scored in the first half. Unfortunately for Glenwood, they, the Lions stayed unbeaten with a 65-45 victory. Now it's time for my first basketball picks of the season. My first game is Iowa versus Michigan. I have Iowa over Michigan. The reason why is Iowa will be upset after losing to Ohio State on Tuesday. It will be a good and close game on Saturday. I think uh, my next game is Mi Michigan State in at Wisconsin. I think Michigan State will win due to the fact that Wisconsin hasn't been shooting the ball well and the Badgers have been struggling as late right now and that's why Sparty will come out top. My next game is Texas at Kansas State. I think K-State will pull off the upset and beat Texas at home on Saturday after losing to West Virginia on Saturday. This is a trap game for Texas, I think. And the last game is Gonzaga at Memphis. I think the Tigers will win Will win since they are coming off a huge 30-point win over the Rutgers Scarlet Knight on Tuesday. And I think they're staying at home. They're playing a good Gonzaga team. So I think it'll be close, though. But I think Memphis will pull it out at the end. That's it for the first edition of my 2014 college basketball picks. Now let's send it back to Dane for the weekly debate. Very good job, Eric, there with your college basketball picks. So I have to watch that over on the weekend. CJ Carmine going crazy in the, in the studio or in the control room. I wonder, maybe he pulled it off. I don't know. Guys, thanks for coming on. We got Ben Lex. Who's on again? You just keep wanting to come back on, right? Of course. Tyler yeah. Beckman was on one of our first debates with Mr. Garber. We tried a rematch of Mr. Garber, and he said he was busy, so I don't know if he was backing out or what. He's but scared. He's scared again. Because we actually had some really good topics, and we'll go ahead and start right now with were you guys shocked? We'll go with Ben and go down to Beckerman. Were you guys shocked about with what happened at the Super Bowl? I mean, just how much of a blowout ended up being, Ben? Yeah, I was real surprised. I thought Denver was going to come out with it. You know, I like both teams, so I'm not really upset with the outcome. But I really thought Peyton Manning was going to pull this one off. Tyler, go to you. Uh, I really, I was expecting the Seahawks to win, but not like that. I thought it'd be a game where it was around, you know, 24 to 20, something close, where a possession or a field goal changes the game, but not that. It really was sort of out of control. The best part was Joe Namath wearing wearing his 70s, you know, fur, and then he, if you noticed, he did the coin flip too early and the ref had to catch it. So, that's all I'm gonna say about Joe Namath there. But staying with the Super Bowl, Super Bowl, I'm gonna add a question in here. Super Bowl was so bad, sometimes people turn to the commercials thinking, okay, maybe there's some hope here. Were there any good commercials, and if so, what? Ben, we'll start with you, go down to mm. You know, they have kind of gone downhill this past couple years for me personally. Um, so the game is really the big thing. Uh, they weren't bad, but mm -hmm. you know, they could have been better. There's been some uproar over some of them too. The America the Beautiful one on Coca-Cola because yeah. of being said in different languages. You have some people. There's Joe Namath and the and the <laughs> and the fur I was talking about. This guy's a legend here. Watch, he's gonna go ahead and do it too early. 
Or no, this was the good one they didn't go and catch before. But Tyler, what about the Super Bowl commercial? I thought they were a pretty big letdown this year. They're uh, they're, they're no longer funny. They're just kind of some were really weird and out there. So they're, they're not they're not funny, haha. There anymore. They're they're weird. Yeah. Funny. Definitely. I'm gonna make you think, and I don't like that when Me I'm neither. watching my Super Bowl Me commercials. Neither. Okay, let's go ahead and move on. So far, we're agreeing. Maybe let's get to something we disagree here. If, is NASCAR a sport? Now, this has been a question I've been waiting to put on for a little while. No, Tyler watches NASCAR. I dabble in it watching it a little bit. But, uh, Ben, we'll start with you. Do you think uh, NASCAR or um, stock car racing in general is a sport? No, not at all. I don't think it's a sport. Um, I recognize that it does take skill and the people are very talented, they're going very fast, but all they do is take left turns, can't really be that hard. I don't consider it a sport. Tyler? Well, if you're going to use that argument, then what's <laughs> soccer? You're just kicking a ball. That's it. True. Doesn't take much skill. I mean, NASCAR is... And Ben played soccer, so he, he may did. have struck he a chord. Did. He did. <laughs> and I mean, NASCAR, it's uh, one of the biggest spectator sport in America. It was pulled higher than NHL recently in America. It takes a lot of skill. Mm -hmm. I mean, when you think about it, how many people crash each day going 50 miles an hour? And they're going four times that. It's about the racing, endurance, yeah. too. I'm going to back you up here, Beckerman. It's about the endurance to stay, you know, hydrated and stuff when you're going through, um, through for, all you know, those four, laps, For, you know, four or five hundred, you know, laps mm -hmm. for four, four hours. It's, it's tough. And there's a lot of skill and endurance and technique that comes into it. See, now there's something, there's another thing on whether a sport or not, if it is a sport or not, I think kind of comes down to if you can judge it at a certain point, that it may not be a sport. Like, for example, boxing, you got to judge it. So that, the way I see it, if you have to judge and have someone else's opinion on it, it's not necessarily a sport. That, in that case, then NASCAR does fall into um, the right category there to be a sport. Now, let's go back, let's back to the Super Bowl. Interested to see what halftime was with Bruno Mars. Had the Red Hot Chili Peppers come on with no shirts on. I don't know what kind of socks he was wearing. But uh, talk about, Ben, you're a Bruno Mars fan, aren't you? Oh, Pretty yeah. much? Yeah. How would you grade his halftime show? You know, I was Give, I was give, a, give it a letter grade. Letter grade? I'd say an A minus, probably. Okay. You know? Any um, lip syncing going on? Because it sure looked like they're coming. Oh, there, there was. Yeah. There was. At every For sure. Now, Tyler? Well, you're more of a country music guy, so what did you think of it? Uh, uh, I mean, I thought Bruno Mars was pretty good. Mm -hmm. I didn't watch a whole lot of it, but what well, I saw Sagan's, was... Some people were thinking, I'll watch the halftime now because the game's terrible. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, I wasn't... The Red Hot Chili Peppers could have uh, stayed behind stage, but Bruno, <laughs> yeah. Mars, Bruno Mars wasn't bad. All right, guys, thanks for coming on the debate and saving me here. You know, with all the school coming on, we've had to go and push it back, everything. So uh, thanks for coming on again for the debate. No problem. No That's problem. it. Thanks for watching another episode of The Rush. Glenwood Boys Basketball is a busy schedule. They have a game tonight against Southeast and tomorrow against SHG and a rescheduled game on Tuesday night against the Lincoln Whalers. Um, at 7.45, so all of those games are planned to be broadcast here on GCNN. Girls play SHG tomorrow as well at 5 o'clock. Fanny's giving me the signal to get out of here, so see ya. We gone.